Albert Graves telephoned and said you needed me for something. Oh. Drink, Mr. Harper? The casting process for Harper, the 1966 movie, was a meticulous task, with each character requiring a unique blend of talent and charm. Paul Newman, the lead, was an easy choice due to his established reputation as a top box office draw. For the role of Harper's wife, Lauren Bacall was cast. Known for her distinctive voice and sultry screen presence, she brought an air of sophistication to the character. The part of Betty, played by Pamela Tiffin, was offered after the film's director, Jack Smite, was impressed by her audition. Her youthful energy and charm were seen as a perfect contrast to Buckhall's seasoned character. Casting the role of Sugar, a seductive and manipulative woman, proved to be a challenge. After several auditions, Julie Harris was chosen aider her ability to portray vulnerability beneath a tough exterior won her the part. Robert Wagner, who played the role of Dell, was a last-minute addition. Originally, another actor was cast, but due to scheduling conflicts, Wagner stepped in. His chemistry with Newman, both on and off-screen, added depth to their complex relationship in the movie. The supporting cast, including Arthur Hill, Janet Leigh, and Shelley Winters, were all experienced actors. Their addition to the cast brought a sense of stability and professionalism, enhancing the overall quality of the film. In the end, the casting of Harper was a delicate balance of star power and new talent, each actor bringing their unique strengths to the table. The result was a captivating film that has stood the test of time. Oh, thank heavens. Exploring the artistic vision behind Harper, directed by Jack Smite, reveals a fascinating blend of creative influences and innovative style. Known for his versatile directorial approach, Smite brought a unique perspective to this classic film. Collaborating closely with the cast and crew, Smite fostered an environment that encouraged creativity and experimentation. He worked particularly well with actor Paul Newman, who played the lead role in Harper. Their strong partnership allowed for the development of complex characters and engaging storylines. Smite's directing style was heavily influenced by film noir, which is evident in Harper's intricate plot and visual aesthetics. He often used unconventional camera angles and dramatic lighting to create a sense of tension and mystery. Moreover, Smite drew inspiration from the hard-boiled detective novels of the time. This influence is reflected in the fast-paced dialogue and snappy wit displayed throughout the movie. In addition to his visual flair, Smite was also known for his ability to elicit strong performances from his actors. He achieved this by providing clear direction while still allowing room for improvisation and personal interpretation. To bring the story to life, Smite collaborated closely with the film's cinematographer, Conrad Hall. Together, they crafted a visually stunning experience that has stood the test of time. In conclusion, the directorial vision behind Harper was a powerful combination of creative influences, innovative style, and effective collaboration. Smite's unique approach to storytelling continues to resonate with audiences today, making this classic film a true testament to his enduring legacy. When did your husband... Don't you want to know what happened to me? <clears throat> Not necessary. When did your husband disappear? In 1966, the movie Harper hit the screens, leaving a lasting impression on its audience. This classic film noir, directed by Jack Smite, is a must-watch for any fan of the genre. The movie is filled with unexpected twists and turns, and there's one particular scene that has always stood out to me. In this scene, Harper finds himself in a dangerous situation, and the tension is palpable. The way the scene is shot and edited keeps you on the edge of your seat, and the suspense is almost unbearable. It's a perfect example of how a well-crafted scene can have a lasting impact on viewers. Out of all the roles in the movie, I have to say that Paul Newman's portrayal of Harper is my favorite. Newman brings a certain charm and charisma to the character that is impossible to ignore. He's the perfect blend of tough and tender, and you can't help but root for him throughout the film. But there are many more surprising and emotional moments in this movie that I won't spoil for you. From shocking revelations to heart-wrenching goodbyes, Harper has it all. Do you have a favorite scene or character from this classic film? Or perhaps a personal memory or experience related to the movie that you'd like to share? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. I don't know, either they're gambling or they got somebody inside the castle. Good. In the mid-1960s, the movie Harper, starring Paul Newman, took audiences by storm. The set design was a key aspect of this classic, with art director Robert Boyle and set decorator George Nelson creating stunning visuals. 
they transformed ordinary locations into captivating sets that perfectly complemented the film's narrative. One notable location was the lavish mansion of a wealthy woman, played by Lauren Buckhall. The production team transformed an existing house into a glamorous residence, complete with opulent furnishings and exquisite artwork. The set became a visual testament to her character's wealth and power. The movie also featured several outdoor scenes, including a desert landscape that posed logistical challenges for the film crew. To overcome these obstacles, they constructed a realistic desert set on a studio backlot, allowing them to control the environment and ensure seamless filming. In terms of innovative techniques, Harper employed the then-revolutionary practice of location scouting using aerial photography. This allowed the production team to identify ideal filming locations from above, ensuring the perfect setting for each scene. Despite the challenges, the team behind Harper managed to create a visually stunning movie that resonated with audiences. The film's enduring legacy is a testament to their hard work and dedication, leaving a lasting mark on the world of cinema. So beach, but I'm hiding from an idiot cop in the men's room. Now that is funny. <laughs> in 1966, the movie Harper graced the silver screen, introducing audiences to a world of suspense and intrigue. This classic film noir, directed by Jack Smite, showcases the talents of actor Paul Newman, who delivers a captivating performance as the title character, a private investigator drawn into a complex web of deception. Harper, played by Newman, is a witty and resourceful detective, known for his ability to solve even the most puzzling cases. In this film, he is hired by a wealthy heiress, played by Lauren Bacall, to find her missing husband. As Harper delves deeper into the case, he uncovers a tangled plot involving a cast of colorful characters, including a retired movie star, a ruthless businessman, and a mysterious femme fatale. The film is set in the sunny climes of Southern California, providing a stark contrast to the dark and gritty world of film noir. The lush landscapes and bright colors add a layer of visual interest to the story, while the fast-paced dialogue and snappy one-liners keep the audience engaged. The supporting cast of Harper is equally impressive, with notable performances by Julie Harris, Arthur Hill, and Robert Wagner. Each actor brings their own unique style to the film, creating a rich and diverse tapestry of characters that add depth and complexity to the story. In addition to its talented cast, Harper is also notable for its sharp writing and direction. The film's screenplay, penned by William Goldman, is filled with witty banter and clever plot twists while Smite's direction keeps the action moving at a brisk pace. The result is a film that is both entertaining and thought-provoking, a true testament to the enduring appeal of the film noir genre. Overall, Harper is a must-see for fans of classic cinema. Its compelling story, memorable characters, and stunning visuals make it a true standout in the world of film noir. So why not take a step back in time and experience this captivating classic for yourself? You won't be disappointed. How many followers you got up here? It varies. The creation of the score and soundtrack for Harper was a collaborative effort between composer Johnny Mandel and musician Louis Armstrong. Mandel, known for his work on The Shadow of Your Smile, brought a jazz influence to the film's music, which complemented the narrative and emotional tone of this classic. In an interview, Mandel shared that he wanted the music to reflect the character of Harper, played by Paul Newman, who was a cool and suave private investigator. The composer achieved this by incorporating a laid-back jazz sound that was both sophisticated and edgy. Louis Armstrong's contribution to the soundtrack cannot be overstated. His rendition of The Shadow of Your Smile became a massive hit and added a soulful and poignant touch to the film. Armstrong's performance was a perfect match for the character of Harper, who, despite his tough exterior, had a soft spot for the woman he loved. Mandel and Armstrong's music perfectly captured the essence of Harper, and elevated the film to new heights. The score and soundtrack were not just an afterthought, but an integral part of the storytelling, enhancing the narrative and emotional tone of this classic. The music for Harper was a testament to Mandel and Armstrong's talent and versatility. They created a score and soundtrack that were both memorable and timeless, leaving a lasting impact on the world of film music. The film's music resonated with audiences and critics alike, earning Mandel an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Score. In conclusion, the creation of the score and soundtrack for Harper was a masterclass in film music composition.
Mandel, and Armstrong's collaboration resulted in a musical tapestry that complemented the narrative and emotional tone of this classic, leaving a lasting mark on the world of film music. In the movie Harper, Frank Sinatra was initially considered for the lead role of Lou Harper, but he declined. Later, Paul Newman took on the part, which was renamed from the original Lou Archer to begin with the letter H, a decision influenced by Newman's successful films HUD and The Hustler, and possibly to avoid legal complications with Ross McDonald's estate. The character Susan Harper, portrayed by Janet Leigh, is an addition to the film, not present in the source novel. In the book, Lou Archer's separation from Susan is only mentioned in passing. This change was likely made to enhance the film's narrative. Despite these modifications, the movie remains a faithful adaptation of McDonald's work, delivering a captivating story that resonates with audiences to this day. The subtle shifts in character and title serve to enrich the viewing experience without detracting from the original story's essence. The, uh, you know, the idea of you and that fraily broad, I know a little something. In the 1966 movie Harper, one of the most iconic scenes is when Harper, played by Paul Newman, first meets Elaine, portrayed by Lauren Buckholt. The tension between the two characters is palpable, and the chemistry between Newman and Buckholt sizzles on screen. The scene is set in Elaine's luxurious home, and the cinematography highlights the opulence of her surroundings. Director Jack Smite expertly frames the shot, with Elaine positioned above Harper on a staircase, giving her an air of authority and mystery. The camera work is subtle, yet effective, with close-ups of Elaine's face revealing her intrigue and attraction to Harper. Newman's performance is equally impressive, with Harper's charm and wit on full display as he tries to win over Elaine. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant, as it sets the stage for the rest of the movie and establishes the dynamic between Harper and Elaine. The scene is a masterclass in acting and direction, and it has become one of the most memorable moments in this classic film. Paul Newman himself spoke about the scene, saying, There's a certain magic that happens when you work with someone like Lauren Buckhall. You can't fake that kind of chemistry. And it was there from the very beginning. The scene also showcases the film's sharp dialogue and witty banter, with Elaine asking Harper, What's your racket? And Harper responding, I'm a detective. I find things. The exchange is emblematic of the film's tone and style, and it sets the stage for the twists and turns that are to come. Overall, the iconic scene between Harper and Elaine in the 1966 movie Harper is a standout moment in a film full of memorable performances and expert direction. The tension, chemistry, and wit on display in this scene make it a classic example of great filmmaking. Liz, I simply want you to find him and tell me which female he's with. Any particular female? Transitioning to the details of the film, Harper features several scenes with alcohol. Harper drinks Lowenbrow beer and orders champagne. At the corner bar, a neon sign advertises Bester's Beer and Valley Brew. Alan Beauty Taggart serves Harper Taboo beer from cans and has Hennessy at his home bar. Paul Newman and Harold Gould later reunited as con men in The Sting. The film also shows the use of a can opener to pierce the top of a beer can, similar to a scene in a catered affair with Ernest Borgnine. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Released in 1966, Harper, starring Paul Newman, made a significant cultural and social impact. The film resonated with audiences due to its fresh take on the detective genre, blending action, humor, and style. Its influence on pop culture was evident in the surge of detective movies and TV shows that followed, inspiring filmmakers to explore new narrative structures and characters. This classic film contributed to discussions on relevant social themes, such as the changing role of men in society. Harper, a modern detective, embodied a shift away from the traditional, hard-boiled detective stereotype. He was portrayed as a more relatable character, struggling with personal issues and maintaining a sense of humor. Moreover, the movie showcased a diverse range of characters and settings, reflecting the social landscape of the time. The representation of strong, independent women and people of color in leading roles was both novel and impactful. Audiences connected with these characters, leading to increased demand for more diverse representation in media. In essence, Harper left an indelible mark on the film industry and popular culture, pushing boundaries and sparking conversations on relevant social themes. Its influence can still be seen today, 
as modern filmmakers continue to draw inspiration from its innovative storytelling and diverse representation. Hiya. The T2C01 tanker used in the film's final scenes, originally named Seven Pines, was built in 1943 by the Sun Shipbuilding Company at Chester, Pennsylvania. It was later sold to a private firm in 1948 and changed hands several times before becoming the Zephyr Hills in 1959, as seen in this movie. This ship was one of 533 T-type vessels built between 1945 and 1945. Sadly, it was scrapped in Taiwan in 1969. In 1966, the movie Harper starring Paul Newman had its grand premiere at the Park Plaza Cinema in Arlington, Texas. The cinema, which opened on May 26, was General Cinema's 15th theater in Texas and fourth in the area. The Park Plaza Cinema was operational until May 19, 1988 and closed its doors on February 28, 2002, before being demolished in 2008. It's worth noting that Harper was the final film for actress Jacqueline DeWitt who played the role of Betty Fraley. Her acting career spanned over three decades, making notable appearances in films like Gentleman's Agreement and My Friend Irma. Harper marked the end of an era for this accomplished actress. And give them to me, that's all I was hired for. Take the money. I won't talk, I mean it. But killing me gets Harper, released in 1966, received mixed reviews from critics. The New York Times' Bosley Crowther praised the film, calling it a first-rate melodrama with a first-class cast. He commended actor Paul Newman's performance, stating he plays with his usual magnetic force. The film also received positive audience reactions. Audiences appreciated the fast-paced plot and the star-studded cast, which included Lauren Buckall, Julie Harris, and Robert Wagner. The movie was a commercial success, grossing over $10 million at the box office. Harper earned several award nominations, including an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Song for My Friend, My Friend. The film was also nominated for two Golden Globe Awards Best Motion Picture, Drama, and Best Actor in a Motion Picture, Drama for Paul Newman. These accolades were significant for those involved in the film. For Paul Newman, the nominations added to his growing reputation as a talented and versatile actor. The nominations also highlighted the film's high production values and the quality of the script and direction. The awards and nominations also helped to establish the movie as a classic of the crime genre. The film's success paved the way for a sequel, The Drowning Pool, released in 1975, which also starred Paul Newman. In conclusion, while critics had mixed opinions about Harper, audiences and industry professionals recognized its quality. The film's success and accolades were a testament to the talent of the cast and crew, and helped to establish the movie as a classic of the crime genre. Why are we going the opposite direction? She want to get as far as she can from that money. Transitioning to details about this classic, the film pays homage to Humphrey Bogart Private Eye movies by featuring Lauren Bucall, reminiscent of her role in The Big Sleep. Bucall's character, like General Sternwood in The Big Sleep, is concerned about a missing husband. Star billing includes Paul Newman, Lauren Bucall, Julie Harris, Arthur Hill, and Janet Lee. Originally titled The Snatch, the source novel was Ross McDonald's The Moving Target. Yeah, after I see a friend. Male or female? Samson's lawyer, Albert Graves. Meanwhile, the film's director, Jack Smite, had a unique way of dealing with the cast and crew. He would often surprise them with impromptu parties and gatherings, which would bring everyone together and break the tension on set. Paul Newman, the star of the movie, would often join in on the fun, playing his guitar and singing with the crew. These spontaneous gatherings would not only boost morale, but also foster a sense of camaraderie among the cast and crew. During the filming of a particularly intense scene, Jack Smite decided to take a break and treat the cast and crew to a picnic lunch on the beach. The atmosphere was relaxed and everyone was in high spirits. Paul Newman, who was known for his sense of humor, started telling stories and jokes which had everyone in stitches. The break was just what the cast and crew needed to recharge and refocus. The film cinematographer, Russell Harlan, was particularly impressed with the way the lighting was used in the movie. He would often work late into the night, fine-tuning the lighting to get the perfect shot. Paul Newman would often join him, offering his input and suggestions. The attention to detail and the collaborative effort between the cast and crew resulted in a visually stunning film. What about later? Later too. No, you'll take off on whatever lousy situation. In the movie Harper, 
The title in Great Britain was The Moving Target, which is also the name of the source novel by Ross MacDonald. The film features a character named Alan Tagger, played by Robert Wagner, who impersonates actor James Cagney. Additionally, there's a notable error in the opening credits where Roy Jensen is credited as Roy Jensenator. However, in the end credits, his name is spelled correctly. And then it starts right there and goes all the way. Released in 1966, Harper made a significant impact on the crime and detective film genre. This classic, directed by Jack Smite, showcased a new kind of private eye embodied by the lead actor, Paul Newman. The movie's fresh take on the genre has left a lasting legacy in film history. The film's influence can be seen in the way it inspired future filmmakers to explore the complexities of their characters. Harper was not just about solving a crime, it delved into the protagonist's personal life, adding depth and intrigue. This approach was revolutionary at the time and has since been adopted in many modern detective and crime dramas. Harper also introduced a more cynical and vulnerable form of hero, a departure from the traditional hard-boiled detective. This shift in characterization has resonated in many subsequent films and television shows, demonstrating the film's enduring impact. The movie's influence extends beyond its character development. The fast-paced narrative, laced with humor and sharp dialogue, set a new standard for the genre. Harper proved that a crime film could be intelligent, entertaining, and thought-provoking all at the same time. In essence, Harper has left an indelible mark on the film industry. Its innovative approach to storytelling and character development has inspired countless filmmakers and continues to influence the crime and detective genre. This classic film remains a testament to the power of cinema and its ability to transcend time, leaving a lasting legacy for future generations to enjoy and learn from. You walk? Maybe. Featuring two actors named Robert. The movie also starred Paul Newman as Lou Harper. In the film, Harper's fee was 100 per day plus expenses, with a humorous mention of a 2000 flat rate. At a gas station, a pump label indicated contains lead, which was phased out by 1975 due to environmental regulations banning leaded gasoline from new vehicles after January 1st, 1996. But when I found him, and was faced with the prospect of setting him free, in the 1966 film Harper, the character Albert Graves, played by Arthur Hill, is seen doing a static tension exercise. When questioned by Harper, Graves reveals that he stays fit from his time serving in the Royal Canadian Air Force, which coincidentally, Hill himself had done during World War II. Moving on, the movie Harper marked a significant milestone for screenwriter William Goldman. It was his first solo script credit, according to Time Out. Goldman later adapted another Ross MacDonald novel, The Chill, for film, but unfortunately, the screenplay has yet to be produced. In essence, the movie Harper holds a special place in the world of cinema, not only for its captivating storyline but also for the opportunities it provided for those involved in its production. I'm ready! I feel great! Help! In the 1966 film Harper, a connection to Alfred Hitchcock can be found through its stars. Janet Lee, who co-starred in Psycho, appears in this movie, while The Drowning Pool, its sequel, features Melanie Griffith, daughter of Tippi Hedren from The Birds. Interestingly, Paul Newman, Harper's lead, starred in Torn Curtain with Julie Andrews the same year. Another unique detail in Harper is the use of a steel can for beer, which required a special tool called a church key to puncture holes. This was common before the pop-top aluminum can became popular. It's a rare sight in films, making it a notable detail in this classic. Struther Martin, who appeared in several films alongside Paul Newman, also had a role in Harper. Their collaboration spanned over a decade, from The Silver Chalice in 1954 to Slapshot in 1977, making their on-screen partnership a fascinating study in cinematic history. Hello, Miranda. Miranda's coming. How are you? Suicidal. In the 1960s, a movie named Harper became one of Newman's biggest hits and significantly contributed to establishing his cool star reputation. The film's opening credit sequence was particularly noteworthy, as screenwriter William Goldman later revealed. Goldman knew he had succeeded when he wrote the scene where Harper, forced to rebrew coffee grounds from the trash can for his morning cup, displayed his dismay, creating empathy between the character and the coffee-drinking audience. Interestingly, this opening sequence was the last thing Goldman wrote for the screenplay. 
Another intriguing detail about Harper is the 356 Speedster that the main character drives. This car was one of only 140 made, making it a rare collectible. A fully restored version has been sold at auction for a staggering 300,000, highlighting the classics enduring appeal and value. This fact alone demonstrates how the movie's production team paid attention to even the smallest details to create a captivating experience for its audience. But man, wouldn't hurt a fly. In the 1966 film, Harper, a Harris's hawk, native to the Southwest United States and parts of South America, is featured. The bird is held on the arm of Claude, played by Struther Martin, at a mountaintop religious retreat. Harris's hawks are popular for use in falconry, the practice of hunting with trained birds of prey. Harper marks the first of two films based on Lou Harper novels, the second being The Drowning Pool in 1975. Initially, Newman had hoped to film McDonald's novel The Instant Enemy, but the project never came to fruition. William Goldman, the scriptwriter, was a big fan of Ross McDonald's work, the source novelist of Harper. Goldman's admiration for McDonald's writing is evident in the film's adaptation of the novel. This classic film noir, with its intriguing plot and complex characters, remains a favorite among older adults. The movie's captivating storyline and memorable performances continue to resonate with audiences today. Where have all the merrymakers gone? I'm gonna take you home, honey. Oh, now don't. In 1967, screenwriter William Goldman won the Edgar Award for his work on a certain film, which was his second screenplay to be filmed and his first solo credit as a writer. He received 80000 for his services. This movie, directed by Jack Smite, marked the first of two collaborations between Smite and actor Paul Newman, who later made The Secret War of Harry Frigg in 1968. The film's source novelist, Ross MacDonald, was known for his Lou Archer detective series. However, Newman, who played the lead role, opted to change the name of MacDonald's most famous detective. According to Frank Miller at the TCMDB, Newman's decision was influenced by his success in two films starting with the letter H, The Hustler, and HUD. He believed that a name change would be beneficial. However, Goldman offered a different explanation, stating that the name change was necessary because the producers had not bought the rights to the series, just to the moving target. He thought Harper seemed like an appropriate name for the private eye, as it reflected the character's tendency to harp on things. What you were really doing is warning Rossiter to take off. Are you saying all this because I got a couple of records? Critically acclaimed, Harper has earned a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes from 18 reviews. The film features Paul Newman, known for his memorable characters with names starting with This pattern includes his role as Harper, a private investigator hired to find a wealthy man's missing wife. Sheb Woolley, another actor in Harper, gained fame with his novelty song The Purple People Eater. The song spent six weeks at number one and sold three million copies. Wooly's music career included other humorous songs like Harper Valley P.T. and 15 Beers Ago. His musical talent added a unique touch to the film. Lux, who cares about Lux? Well, the point is we're less than two hours drive from Los Angeles. Interestingly, producer Elliot Kastner mentioned that he paid author Ross McDonald only 1000 for the film rights to his novel. This classic featured a memorable moment years later when Paul Newman and Shelley Winters appeared together on The Tonight Show. During the show, Johnny Carson asked Winters if she and Newman had ever worked together. Winters replied, No, we haven't had the opportunity, causing Newman to do an astonished double take. We haven't? What was I in Harper? Chopped liver? Winters admitted she had forgotten about the movie, despite Newman reminding her that they had filmed love scenes for two days. Another notable detail from the film is the car driven by Lou Harper, played by Newman. The character's vehicle was a black top gray silver Porsche. 356 a speedster, which added to the film's distinct visual style. <laughs> After 17 years, the big screen finally adapted Ross McDonald's novel, The Moving Target, with the release of the movie Harper in 1966. The film features the talented Lauren Buck Hall, who scored her first film role after being discovered on the cover of Harper's Bazaar magazine at the age of 18. Her debut role in To Have and Have Not was actually based on, and named for Howard Hawks' wife at that time, Nancy Gross Slim Hawks. Buck Hall repeated this tribute in Ready to Wear, playing a character named Slim Chrysler, just a short time after Slim Hawks' death. 
The house used as the Sampson estate in the movie, Beverly House, is the same location where Jack Waltz's mansion was filmed in The Godfather. This classic film has a fascinating connection to another iconic movie, showcasing the versatility of the filming location. Did Harper leave a lasting impression on you? This classic film from 1966 has touched the hearts of many, and we'd love to hear your stories. How did this movie influence your perspective on cinema? Did it inspire you to explore new genres or styles? Or perhaps it brought back memories of a certain time in your life? We encourage you to share your experiences and thoughts with us. Reflect on the moments that stood out to you, the characters that you connected with, and the emotions that the film evoked. Whether you were captivated by the storyline, the acting, or the cinematography, we want to hear from you. Your insights and memories are valuable to us, and we're excited to engage in this cinematic exploration with you. So, don't be shy. Share your thoughts, and let's start a conversation. Like, share, and subscribe to stay connected, and continue our journey through the world of cinema. We can't wait to hear from you. It's the only way he can prove to himself he's still breathing. He had a son, you know.